Hello and welcome to another Zuzin session. How about that? How about that? I bet you didn't expect that shit to happen. So today uh, we are programming in Rust again. Yet again, Zozin is programming in Rust and you can't see uh, the chat anymore. I wonder why. Can I just ping? Okay, so the, the chat is here. Chat, say hi to YouTube. Say hi to YouTube. So today we are yet again programming in uh, Thrust. I know that will make some people mad, but I do not care because I need content. Okay. So uh, you know how um, I have this like a very... Um, very interesting technique. I'm not sure if it's that interesting, but I find pers personally find it interesting. Uh, I have this a very interesting uh, technique up of my, up uh, my sleeve. Up, up my sleeve. Is that how we say that? But yeah, so basically in my toolbox. Right, in my toolbox. That's right. So, and that technique is basically every time I need to visualize something, uh, some, uh, some graphical thing, I basically do that in a memory, in a buffer of pixels, and then I save that buffer of pixels to a PPM image, right? So, and the cool uh, thing about that technique is that that uh, image format is extremely simple. It is extremely simple, and there is a lot of uh, viewers, and uh, specifically image magic, uh, that support uh, this kind of format. So, and again, with image magic, you can simply convert it to something that uh, your software can read. But uh, from the point of view of the uh, of the application itself, it is really easy to generate such images, and it's really really useful when you just want to debug something graphical, but you don't want to introduce any dependency for just like a debug output, right? So it is extremely extremely convenient so um yeah maybe i can even demonstrate that let's actually demonstrate that so uh for a full demonstration of this technique i think i can redirect you to one of my previous video on the Soding daily channel Soding daily <clears throat> so and i think the video was called <laughs> god my my, my thumbnails become become more and more ridiculous every fucking day. Uh, so, and the video is called Programming in Rust. Yeah, yeah. So, if you're interested in this thing, I can redirect you in here. Uh, shut the fuck up, Zozin. And uh, then I'm going to give it in here. Right. Uh, programming in Rust. Um, how to say that? Um, stream uh, where I demonstrated how I worked uh, with PPM. And maybe just to recap that stream, uh, maybe just to recap that stream, uh, maybe I'm gonna do that again, right? So I did it once, I'm gonna fucking do it again. So let's -a go. Uh, so what I'm gonna do in here, maybe I'm gonna call PPM demo, right? And let's create a simple Rust program that basically generates a PPM image. The cool thing about the technique yet again, you don't even need any third party dependencies. And because of that, if you want to just quickly prototype something, you don't even need cargo. You can just create like a simple Rust uh, main.rs file and just quickly prototype something, uh, quickly, um, quickly check something. Uh, I'm not saying that using dependencies is bad or anything like that yet again. I'm just saying, if you uh, want to quickly prototype something uh, graphical and just output something quickly, like, in a, you know, just see how it works in a graphical manner, you can use that technique. You don't have to, but you can. It's just like an option that I give you. I'm not telling you how to develop things. I prefer not to tell people how to do things, right? So uh, let's actually create like an entry point or something like that. Um, okay. So, uh, let's maybe, um, you know, decide how we're going to be representing the pixels. So, I suppose we're going to represent the pixels in a 32-bit, uh, you know, integer, right? So, and because of that, uh, we're going to have a function that basically save a PPM file, right? And it will accept pixels, which is going to be a slice of... Um, uh, U32, so and each individual U32 is going to be a single pixel, right? So on top of that, we're going to also accept the width uh, of this entire thing, uh, U size and the height, right? So uh, the thing about these pixels is going to be basically we're going to store the image continuously, right? It's going to be a two-dimensional image, but uh, it's going to be stored row-wise. It's going to be continuous in the memory. And because of that, I actually kind of not sure uh, if I want to store uh, height of the image, 
because when you pass a slice, you implicitly pass the size of the slice as well. Slice is basically the beginning of the slice in the memory plus its size. So you can kind of derive the height of the image by only knowing the size of the slice and its width. So maybe it will be more like, you know, less wasteful, more or less wasteful uh, to uh, pass uh, pixels and a stride, right? So we can pass the pixels and a stride and compute width and height somewhere like this. So width is going to be a uh, stride, right? So this is the stride and the height is going to be basically pixels uh, len divided by stride. There we go. So we, we have width and height like this. Uh, so after that, um, if I want to save PPM to a file, so I'm thinking that maybe uh, we're not going to say that we're saving it specifically to a file. Let's say that we're going to be writing PPM image into some sort of a writer, right? So we're going to accept the sync, which is a write uh, writer of some sort, but it's going to be like a reference. And if I remember correctly, you're supposed to do something like DIN or IMPL. But I don't quite remember what's the difference between DIN and IMPL. I think uh, like DIN in IMPL is something like IMPL is when the type is decided at compile time and DIN is when the type is decided as, at runtime, right? So I think this is what it is, right? So this is the compile time and uh, DIN is the runtime, right? So that's the main difference. And because of that, I think I'm going to go with IMPL because I think I want, I want this entire thing to act like more of a like a generic thing, right? So because of that, this is going to be impel. And of course, this thing is going to be mutable. So we have this kind of reference, right? And of course, this thing will probably return some sort of a result, but let's not go there, right? So let's actually let the compiler to tell us what we're supposed to do. Okay, so I'm going to be iterating. Um, two, 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 two. Before I go, I actually have to write the metadata uh, thing into the into the sync. So we have to do something like sync and then p6. So p6 indicates that um, we're using this specific format, right? We're using this format with this amount of uh, colors and stuff like that. Then we provide the new line. And then we need to specify width and height. I think we have to specify width and height. And then the size of a single component is going to be 255. And then we have to put like a new line in here. So then we provide width and height. And we're pretty much ready to iterate through all of the pixels. Um, so I'm going to just go for pixel in pixels. Uh, we're going to be doing the following things. So first I need to extract. Um, we need to extract each individual component of the pixel, right? So um, I think we're going to be storing them like this. Uh, so RRGGBB, right? Something like this, RRGGBB. So and if I want to have like a red component, I'll have to take the pixel and shift it to right by two bytes, right? So to get rid of the G and B. And then uh, with a mask, a mask, I will have to extract this kind of thing. So there we go. We extracted R. Right, so this is R. So extract G, we'll have to do this kind of thing. And to extract B, we'll have to do this kind of thing. So basically, uh, we're extracting each individual bytes from uh, from this integer when we have RGB. So, and now we have to just write these three bytes into the writer. So as far as I know, um, sync has a method to write, if I remember correctly. Does it, does it have a method to write? Let's actually see. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, do, 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 do. so is it FMT or is it IO? I think we, we need IO in this case. Yeah, so write and it accepts the slice of bytes. Okay, that's perfect. So uh, we can do something like bytes and in here we're going to have R, G and B. But the problem with all of that is that these things are going to be um, U, U32, so we'll have to say something like as U8, and there we go. So we have the array of these things, and maybe I can even inline it like that and just take the reference to this entire thing, and I think that will work. So, uh, yep, let's try to compile this entire thing. Uh, Rust C main.rs rust c main the rest and let's see in how many places it will fail okay so we don't have a write so i suppose we'll have to use std io uh write first mm, so what's the other thing we need in here 
So uh, to, to the function is never used, that is fine. Uh, never used the result. Okay, let's actually make it return the result, right? So I'm gonna actually use STDIO. So we, if we have several results, we don't sort of like collide them together. And this entire thing is gonna be a returning result like this. So, and in here, I'm gonna just be putting these kind of things. Uh, is it gonna work? Is it gonna work now, yo? Um, so, error because of the return type. Mm, mismatched type, mismatched type, mismatched type. Mm, 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 mm. So, what did it expect instead? Is it expected uh, IO error or is it expected... Oh, yeah, yeah, so you have to put OK at the end of this entire thing. Yeah, 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 sorry, keep forgetting. Thank you, uh, Rust compiler, very cool. I think uh, we did everything I wanted to do in here. And uh, now we probably need to allocate some memory for the image, right? So let's allocate some memory for the image. So we're gonna have some sort of pixels. Maybe we're gonna have mutable pixels and this entire thing is going to be uh, essentially U32 and the size is gonna be width by height, right? So why does it suggest me to do a, a Heisenbot? I don't know. So this is going to be width, uh, it's going to be use size, and how big of an image do we want? Uh, let's say uh, 800 by 600, right? 800 by 600, and then maybe we want to initialize this entire thing, so it's going to be width and height. Am I doing everything correctly, Rust developers? Am I doing everything correctly? Am I using the right kind of like traits and references and borrow checker rules and stuff like that? Because I have no idea. I never programmed in Rust in my entire life, so I have no idea. Please tell me everything you know about Rust so I can finally learn something about it. Okay, so let's actually fill up the pixels. We can fill them up with... Maybe we can actually fill this entire thing with a specific color. Let's actually fill it with the color of the communism. Right, so this is going to be a red color. Uh, okay, so after that, uh, we need to open a file, right? So we need to do something like stdfs, and this is going to be something like this. So this is going to be mutable file, file uh, create, I think we have to do create, and uh, this is going to be output ppm, right? So as far as I know, we, we can unwrap this entire thing. I think it's going to be easier to unwrap it in here. Let's actually just unwrap it. And then uh, I'm gonna just write uh, this entire thing in here, right? So this is gonna be uh, the file, this is gonna be a mutable reference, then we give the pixels. Uh, I suppose I will just have to take the reference in here and a stride in this case is gonna be width, right? So we don't have to provide the height because the height is implicitly provided by the size of the pixels, right? Because the size of the pixels is width by height. So we can always divide by width to get the height of this entire thing. So that's why this thing is just called stride, right? So then unwrap this entire thing and there we go. We have an image, uh, we have a program that uh, basically prints a single image. So this is not a sync, this is file. Uh, do we have anything else? Uh, so it says that pixels doesn't have to be mutable. Okay, sure, uh, doesn't have to be mutable. Cool, very cool. So, and now if I try to run this entire thing, it takes some time, uh, but still eventually it produces the image. And if we open this image, it's a red square. Does anyone have any questions about what just happened on the screen? We just generated an image, a red image, red square image, with a single Rust file, without any third-party dependencies, without any cargo, and that took us around uh, 13 lines of code. So, that's why I think this is a very powerful debugging technique, where you can just like dump out some sort of image and just see how it works. What's interesting is that you can now, for instance, generate some patterns, right? If you're interested in that, right? So we can generate some sort of patterns. Uh, let's generate some patterns in the pixels. Uh, so we can do something like mute, right? And let's iterate the rows and columns. So uh, this is gonna be a height uh, and uh, X is gonna be a width. And let's actually normalize these coordinates, right? Let's normalize them a little bit. So we're gonna have U and V. Uh, so U is going to be X as F32 divided by uh, width as F32. 
Then we're gonna have V, U as F32, height as F32. There we go. Am I doing everything correctly? I'm using Rust for the first time. I don't know if I'm doing everything correctly. Please correct me, Rust developers. Any professional Rust developers in the chat, please correct me. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm sorry. Uh, so, okay. Now, uh, what we're gonna be doing in here is we're gonna be using U and V as the components for red and green. So we're gonna be doing the usual UV pattern, right? So um, how are we gonna be doing that? So I'm gonna be doing U and then I need to multiply that by 255, right? So then I kinda need to convert this entire thing into as U32 and that's gonna be our red, right? So this is basically red. And then uh, we're going to have a green, uh, which is going to be V. So we have a red and green. So now we need to compose these two things into a pixel, right? So the R is located at the third pixel. So that means I'll have to take R and just move it uh, like this, right? And then um, I'll have to combine it with G, uh, which I will have to move like this. And for blue, let's actually just ignore blue. And this is going to be our pixel. So let's actually set that pixel in y multiply by width uh, multiply by width plus, uh, plus x and there we go we set the pixel right so uh, and we generated some sort of a pattern the classical uv pattern where you use a red as the u and uh, green as the v coordinate and that uh, generates a gradient let's actually take a look at this entire thing so i should actually recompile the entire stuff so this is going to be rust c uh, and then we're going to try to run this entire thing and it doesn't work uh, because why? Uh, you don't have to put F in here. I hope somebody called that in the chat because we have so many professional Rust developers in the chat. I'm pretty sure somebody called that mistake. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay, so let's continue. So we have pixel and this is the pixels and uh, there we go. Okay, so let's take a look at the pattern and there we go. So this is a classical UV pattern and we just generated that completely by hand without using any third party dependencies and we dumped it into a PPM file and it makes it super easy to debug graphical things. You know what I'm talking about? <clears throat> so does anyone have any questions about what just happened on the screen? Um... Uh, why are you using P6 instead of P3? Um, I don't know. I'm kind of comfortable with P6, uh, to be fair. So as far as I know, P3 is ASCII. So P3, by definition, will just take more space by P6. P6 is more compressed, you know? Uh, so because it's completely binary. Mm -hmm. What's up, Deep Singularity? Hello, hello. Um... Mm. Yo, do P -P 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 I am back from my vacation. Thank you, Erhan Kornas2000, uh, for eight months of tier one subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, really appreciate that. So, and uh, yeah. So, and now, uh, one day, I actually ask myself a question. So, this PPM bullshit is kind of cool, right? It's kind of useful for debugging purposes. But can I have a similar simple video format? You know, I want to have a, like a very sim a similar simple video format where I can just dump uh, raw frames, raw uncompressed frames. Uh, and uh, then I can open it in any video, um, video editor. So, and uh, the other day I just <laughs> give... <laughs> Oh boy, sweet, sweet summer child. All right, so, and one day I just put the following um, thing into the Google uh, search, uh, simple video format. Simple video format. And uh, yeah, so I found, found this Stack Overflow question and somebody answered with a pretty interesting uh, suggestion. Why UV4 impact 2? So, it's a file, um, write it to a file or standard output and then use a FFmpeg to encode it. So this thing is uncompressed format and it's ridiculously simple, especially if you use non-interlaced 444. So, okay, uh, if we take a look at this entire thing, right? It is in fact a very simple format. It is very simple format and you output everything in a, a raw uh, form without compressing or any encoding and stuff like that. And it's supposed to work in like standard uh, video players. Um, 
Um, it certainly works in, in M player for sure. So, uh, but the problem with this format is that it uses this weird uh, color space, but I think we can try to get used to that. So it doesn't use, use RGB, uh, but maybe it's like a minor inconvenience that you have to deal with. So, and the topic of today's stream is going to be learning this simple format, right? So ag again, and another thing that I forgot to mention, like this format, like PPM format, the beauty of the PPM format is that it's not limited to Rust. Like I cannot, like, I don't understand why people are not excited uh, as much as about PPM as I am, because it's not only simple, it's not only doesn't require any dependencies, you can code it yourself by hand, you can code it in any language where you can use out, where you can output bytes to the file. This is insane, like it's so goddamn cool. It's really, really cool that it, such format is a thing and there are still uh, image viewers that still support that. Fech certainly supports that. You can open this kind of stuff in Fech and any language you use, you can just dump something in there. Isn't that fucking cool? It's just so fucking excited that there's still some small little piece like simple piece of infrastructure that you can kind of rely upon no not not entirely because not everyone supports this kind of format but there's a lot of things that do support that that, that kind of thing um i wrote it in goal yeah yeah so the, the beauty of this thing it's a completely language agnostic it's just like cool right it takes some some space and stuff like that but you're not supposed to use it for storing images you're supposed to use it for like debug output it's just like yeah, you use any language, and in any language, if you just quickly need to debug something graphical, you just dump something to that format, and you can just view it without any hustle. It's just like, it's fucking beautiful. Why am I the only one who's excited about that? I just don't understand. Like, is, am, I, am I crazy? I think I'm, I think I'm crazy. Because, like, nobody gives a shit, apparently, that, yeah, you have a simple solution that you can just rely on. Uh, and I want something similar for uh, video formats, and that's precisely what we're doing today. So if anyone interested, so this is the this is the thing, and uh, I'm gonna put this thing in the description, right? So this is gonna be the stuff. Okay, let's read more about this format. So it has an extension of Y4M, right? That's the extension it has. There are some samples, holy fucking shit. So uh, we have a couple of samples in here. So maybe I'm gonna actually quickly, so where is it? It's from M player. Ooh, so maybe that means M player should be able to support this kind of thing. Um, all right, so let's actually rename our PPM demo to something like, uh, like this. Um, how are you supposed to pronounce you uh what you've let's actually pronounce this thing as you've is that a good pronunciation of this thing you've you've form pack to impact for you <laughs> oh shit they should have called this entire thing uh to impact for you <laughs> I'm gonna call it like that. I'm gonna call the project like that. This is actually perfect. Uh, so, <laughs> oh shit, uh, to impact for you. <laughs> ah, they missed such a fucking opportunity to call the project to impact for you. <laughs> uh. mm -mm. <sighs> All right. So um, let's just create a samples folder or something. So it's gonna be samples. Um, Rust developers, am I downloading files correctly? Please tell me if I'm downloading. I'm, I'm sorry, it will stop. Uh, okay, so we've got some shit. Uh, so this is the first file. So maybe, so we have two of them, right? We have two of them. So let's actually download both of them. Mm, so there's also MD5. Let's see what do we have in MD5. What do we have in MD5? So, okay. So imagine using MD5 in 2021. Imagine that. So MD5 sum, and we're gonna check for this entire thing is gonna be MD5 sum. And all of the files are okay. Would you look at that? All of the files are okay. Can we compare this thing? 
Um, and okay, so it's eight megabytes. That's a pretty actually big file. So can we open it in a player? Uh, beam. Who's that? Beam Mulder. What is this language, by the way? Hugo. <laughs> Hugo, yes, it's a Haskeller. It's a, it's a Haskeller. I see. It's a German. Uh, okay, I see. Oh, it's Dutch. What's the difference between Dutch and German? I'm really sorry if I opened the can of worms. <laughs> I didn't mean to. Uh, all right. So, okay. So we have that, and if we open this file in Emacs. Okay, so that's actually pretty cool. It's kind of similar to PPM in the sense that it has a, like a textual human readable uh, meta file, right? So if I open that uh, PPM file that I generated, right, you will see that it uh, also has like this, um, you know, textual meta thingy. So, and this thing is kind of similar to that. Okay, so we have other uh, other, uh, other samples. Let's actually open them in player as well. And uh, this is... This is the most ominous cup of coffee I've ever seen in my entire life. I feel like I'm cursed now and I'm gonna die in seven days or something. <laughs> what the fuck did I get myself into? Um, so... <laughs> what the fuck is this shit? Why is this so ominous? What the fuck? <laughs> but yeah, all of these things are in uh, to impact for you uh, format. It's all of them are in to impact for you, and as you can see, all of them are like have this kind of stuff. Uh, so uh, let's see uh, how we can handle this kind of thing. UV for impact is a simple file format designed to hold uncompressed frame of UCBCR video format as UCBCR for two for two two four 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 data for the purpose of encoding, like to impact two. Uh, very simple. The part UV in the, its name just derives from the fact that the color space uh, YCBCR used for color encoding in digital media is often falsely mixed up with the color space UV. Ah. Um, okay, so somebody fucked up and it's not supposed to be called like this. Right, so UV is not the same as UCBCR, but they still used it because it's some sort of like a post-irony, post-modernist joke. Do I understand that correctly? I don't fucking know, like, uh, whatever. I just want to output some frames. Um, okay. So, used in analog pile-based uh, applications, including analog TV and videotapes. Okay. So, uh, YM file begins with the plain text quasi-freedom header. What is quasi-freedom header? I have no idea. The first 10 bytes are the file signature, UV for MPEG2. Okay, so I remember seeing that thing in there, right? Yeah, there we go. So here's the UV for MPEG2. Cool. So this is what the file should start with. Following the signature is any number of parameter prece parameters preceded by a space. The parameters that should definitely be present are width, height, and frame rate. Okay. So width uh, is W followed by plain text uh, integer, uh, W720. And frame is basically the same thing. Okay, so now we can see the uh, width and height of, the, of this entire image. All right, so frame rate followed by the number of frames per second expressed as a fraction. Aha, uh -huh. why, why do you have a fractional? Ah, I know why do you need a fractional FPS. Cake Cone! Hey, me, brother, Cake Cone! Yeah, Americans. Okay, so. <laughs> that's why you need the fractional, okay. Uh, Alright, so I think we can work with that. We're not gonna be using fractional stuff, but uh, yeah. Mm. So, for those who don't know, like, there is a, like, a huge history behind. Uh, behind this like a fractional FPS and I think the best video I've seen that explains this kind of thing is like a stand-up mathematician thing like a channel or something like stand-up math uh, stand-up math and TSC 
Um, yeah, so he actually ex like made uh, 15 minutes video explaining this like NTSC like fractional thingy. So uh, you can check it out in here, Parker. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you so much. I forgot his name. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry for being so disrespectful. So uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So where is my description? Here is my description, and I'm gonna just link to his video. I think it's a pretty cool video. Uh, I really liked it because he went into like technical details on why it is uh, like that. Um, so which is kind of cool. <clears throat> so so interlacing uh, followed by a single letter to indicate interlacing mode. Progressive. Um, I think since we're a progressive audience. Uh, we're gonna be using progressive interlacing. The problem is that I have no idea what the fuck is interlacing. I think I kind of vaguely remember what is interlacing. Um, and I think I even know the video that kind of explains it. Um, so it was on the channel Captain Disillusion, I think. Uh, Disillusion uh, interlacing. Yeah, 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 he actually like made a video about yeah, yeah, yeah CD interlacing. It's such an old concept. Uh, so, and uh, I'm gonna give the link in here. And by the way, it's a, such a short video, maybe we can watch it on right on the stream, because I, I wanna kind of refresh uh, my knowledge about interlacing just a little bit, uh, because I don't remember. So, doo -doo 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 -doo. okay, so let's actually, um, so let's pause the uh, music and let's watch some videos. It is a reaction channel now. Mm. The Nature Videos chat, by the way. I'm joking, don't. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so be, be careful. So there's like, you know, ep ep epilepsy warning. Interlacing, huh? Super easy. I'm gonna have a field day with this. If you think about it, we kind of got into television before it was finished being properly invented. Broadcasting started in the 1930s, but the first flat screen displays that could show moving images in a normal, contiguous way didn't appear until almost the 21st century. Before then, humans had to make do with the cathode ray tube. In a CRT display, an electron emitter shot a stream of electrons at your face. But there was a screen in the way, and the whole thing was in a vacuum tube, so the electrons didn't bump into air molecules. The TV transmission was decoded as fluctuations in the intensity of the electron beam, and as it traveled forward, magnetic coils on the sides of the tube deflected it to scan in a horizontal pattern down the screen. This rapidly drawn pattern of lines, called the raster, generated the video image. Some parts of the world went with 525 lines, others with 625, doesn't matter. It's not a competition, because if it was, Europe would be the winner, and that's... And anyway, this was just vertical resolution. Analog television didn't really have horizontal resolution, since those electron fluctuations across a line were continuous. But electrons themselves don't look like much. In order to make them visible, the screen was covered in a pattern of phosphor dots, which lit up when bombarded by the electrons, then dimmed back down on their own. And this was an issue. All this glowing and dimming had to happen instantly, over and over, at a constant frame rate as high as 30 per second. You couldn't use phosphors that glow longer than a frame, because then the next frame couldn't be drawn in time. But if they dim faster, as every consecutive line on the way to the bottom of the image gets drawn, the lines making up the top are already disappearing. Which in real time means flicker. <laughs> the solution? Draw every other line to get across the raster in half the time, then go back and draw the missing lines in a second pass. That way the refresh rate is doubled, and even though only half the resolution of the image is on screen at one time, the swap is so fast that persistence of vision makes it look like a full resolution frame. Brilliant! Let's move on with our lives! But someone had another idea. Since the two passes get displayed sequentially, why don't we design video cameras to capture them sequentially too? Instead of drawing the odd and even lines of a single moment in time, we could use them to display two different moments, interlaced together as two fields of a single frame. And sure, this was an ingenious way to increase the temporal resolution of video. 
frame rate was effectively doubled, and this became the familiar look of live news broadcasts, soap operas, and other shows recorded directly to tape. It was also a convenient framework for adapting material shot in other frame rates through processes like 3-2 pull-down. But none of it was long for this world. Wait, 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 three. Because it kind of reminds me of what we seen in, in these kind of modes and stuff like that. So maybe it was related to that. Fresh rate CRTs were developed. Digital video capture and playback ran circles around the analog signal and eventually high definition flat screens completely changed the way moving images were displayed. The entire broadcast system for which interlaced video was designed got taken offline around 2009. And even though interlacing is still part of HD standards, it has mostly become an artifact that gets in the way. Modern progressive scan playback devices don't understand interlaced video and just show both fields as what they are. Tiny single pixel scan lines visible along the edges of moving objects. So whether you're adding visual effects to interlaced footage or just exporting it for playback on a modern screen, the interlacing needs to be removed. This can be done one of two ways, either by totally extracting one of the fields, thereby cutting the vertical resolution of the video in half, or by interpolating both fields, which looks a little better but can leave slight ghosting artifacts. Or I guess you can just not care and leave it as is. Maybe having interlacing artifacts in your video is cool and retro now. Maybe some people want to add fake interlace into their videos for style. I should make a tutorial on how to do that. Better yet, a plugin. Cool. Uh, so that's basically what it is. So uh, we spend just four minutes uh, of our lives to learn that we don't we don't have to care about interlacing. <laughs> Right. Since we are generating the video, we're not reading the video that was shot like in uh, somewhere in the boomer times. Uh, we can basically uh, just like don't care. And the question is, what is the don't care option here? <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea. So it's actually a pretty good video, uh, in my opinion. So it was very informative. Uh, ignoring the cringe, I think it was very informative. Uh, so. Mm, progressive. I think maybe it is progressive. So what is it? They, they, they use progressive, I suppose. That's basically what we can use in here, right? So uh, the A parameter, the pixel aspect ratio. Now that this is not the ratio of the picture as a whole, just the pixel. Oh, so you can have square pixels and a different NTSC and some other stuff. Okay. So that's pretty cool. And you can also have a known. So what's the uh, the uh, aspect ratio of the pixel in here? Is that actually zero, zero? Okay. Um, so the next thing is the color space, right? So, um, okay. So I suppose, uh, I don't even know which color space I'm going to be using, to be fair. So definitely not JPEG because I don't want to like encode anything and compress anything or anything like that. So, a oh, color, by the way. UK corner. UK corner. Uh, so parameter X comment ignored by passed by uh, 2MPEG for you processor. So if we have trouble figuring out the difference between this and this. I, I'm pretty sure I don't care. But 420, by the way. <laughs> C420. Okay. So there's some piece of code that might be relevant. God fucking damn it. God fucking damn it. Uh, eh, eh. Okay. So, uh, just a second, so I need to fix my thing, so I need to open this entire thing in here. Mm, two, 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 two. So, it's from Chromium. Mm -hmm. So, Chrome probably capable of reading this kind of stuff. <gasps> That's actually pretty cool. So, I can generate videos that Chrome can read, which is perfect. So, there's a lot of comments in here and shit like that. That's a pretty intense video. <laughs> anyway, so following the header is any number of frames coded in YCBRCR format. Uh, each frame begins with the five bytes frame followed by zero or more parameters, which proceed by 20 ending. Uh, this is the uh, followed by the row bytes of each plane. Okay, so, oh, there we go, here's the frame. So that means we have to have like several of these frames. Uh, can we find them, by the way? Oh shit, it's actually super slow, for, for Emacs at least. 
so yeah, because we have a very long lines in here, so it has a trouble to actually navigate it navigating within these frames. But as you can see, we have like a sequence of frames, and you can ju just jump between them within the the entire thing. Okay, so that's something. Oh my god, Emacs is stuck. <laughs> okay, I can do it. Uh, all right. So and th the question is, what's the size of a single pixel? What's the size of the single pixel? The length of each frame, excluding its header, can be computed as frame length equal to width multiplied by height multiplied by three divided by two. Oh shit! So that means the components of the color for the pixel could be on the boundaries of the byte or something like that. Right. So because you have a three bytes and you divide it by two, so basically a byte may. Oh, I don't want to deal with that. So it's basically uh, one byte plus a half. So that means you have three nibbles, right? So because you know zero or one, zero or one is a bit. So and then you have byte, which is uh, eight bits, right? And four bits are nibbles, right? So there is like a low nibble and upper nibble or something like that. So far as no. So in case of this format, if we take three bytes and divide it by two, right? So one, two, three, that means uh, a single pixel, right? If this is the boundary of the byte, uh, a single pixel is actually three nibbles, right? It's actually three nibbles. I really don't want to deal with that. <laughs> I really don't want to deal with that. So uh, maybe we're going to use like 422, where each pixel is 2, or better yet, 444, where each individual pixel is 3. Right? It's a little bit bigger, but we are in 2021. Memory is cheap. So uh, yeah, maybe we're going to use 444. And for the 444, it's a C444. OK, so that makes sense. I think, I think we can leave with that. And is there anything else for this format? I, I guess that is it. Okay, this is pretty straightforward. And if it's gonna work out, so I'm gonna have a, another tool in my toolbox. Uh, so I'll be able to just generate animations uh, for debug purposes, right? So maybe I wanna quickly just animate something and just see how things move around. And I can just like generate a video out of that and just look at that video. And that will be kind of cool. The only problem is that I have no idea what is YCBCR, what is YCBCR, and how to translate RGB to YCBCR. But maybe this is something that I can just look up. So RGB to uh, YCBCR. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. So there's some sort of like a, a thing in here. Uh, do, 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 do. PDF. Well, I mean, the, the Google already highlights something. So R is basically, you take this YCBCR, you can pose them like that. And <laughs> okay, so I probably have to take this PDF and just like move it uh, around or something like that. So uh, let me see, let me actually move this entire thing to, uh, where is that? Where is that? So it's Microsoft, no, it's Microsystems or something like that. Oh, here we go. Let's open uh, with the PDF reader. And uh, oh my, um, so is there, so we have RGB to, yeah, but what I need in here is RGB to YCBCR444, right? So let's take a look. Um, uh, test bench. This is not what I wanted. Okay, so maybe if we go back to uh, to the content. Mm. Mm. Do, 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 do. So revision key, supported formulas, inputs, output, configuration parameters, timing diagram, resource utilization. Uh, so maybe, just maybe, if we search for these specific numbers within the PDF, uh, which it doesn't really allow us to do. Uh -huh. So I have to type them out manually because why not? There we go, design descriptions. Okay, so uh, uh -huh. uh, after sc scaling the RGB to equations are uh, 
Okay, so that's actually pretty cool. So here is the conversion. Uh, I'm gonna just, uh, you know, scroll S. Um, yoink! Uh, and now I have this formula in here. So maybe I'm gonna be using that in the future. Um, so, and of course, since I'm using this entire thing, I'm, I think I'm gonna be actually giving this uh, link in the references uh, like this. Um, I have no idea what is this document, to be fair. <laughs> Maybe I should not use it. Um, so, some, uh, some sort of PDF that may explain how to convert uh, RGB to YCBCR, all right, so, and this is maybe something that we can use, I don't know, and maybe we also need to get rid of this thing, right, so, and let me double check if this entire thing sort of like goes in the place where expected to go, yeah, don't, don't load the other thing. Uh, so, uh, alrighty, 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 so I'm already streaming for like uh, one hour, do I want to make a small break before we jump into the implementation of this entire thing? Uh, I don't really feel like going onto the break, so let's actually go ahead and implement this entire stuff. Um, so, let me get rid of this entire thing, um, so maybe I'm gonna actually, probably... Uh, save some of this stuff, right? Because I don't really want to remove these things. Maybe I'm going to use them in the future, who knows? Uh, so I'm going to take this piece of code and extract it to a separate function. Uh, generate uh, generate UV pattern, right? So, and in here we're going to accept the pixels, uh, which is going to be the mutable slice of the pixels, and we're going to accept the stride. Uh, right, so, and it's not going to really return anything. I'm going to just copy paste this in here. And then I'm going to be doing generate UV pattern. Uh, I'm going to provide the reference to the pixels. And the stride is going to be the width. Okay, so let's actually follow the compilation uh, errors. Uh, and uh, do rust c main rs. So this is not a width. Okay, so here we have to provide something like this. So width is going to be effectively equal to stride. And the height is going to be equal to pixels length uh, divided by width right so this is going to be height this is going to be width and uh, let's go and just do these kind of things and replace everything hopefully uh, and let's see if this thing still does everything I expected to do and yeah it still generates the the UV pattern okay cool so here is the pixels and here is the other stuff so I'm going to go ahead and just remove everything uh, just in case, but maybe I'm going to actually leave, I don't know, do I want to leave the pixels? Maybe not. Okay, so let's actually leave width and height. Uh, I'm going to only create file, right. So this is going to be output and what's going to be the uh, extension that we're going to use? Uh, I think I'm going to use Y4M, I think it's a good extension, it looks pretty cool. So we created the file and the first thing we need to do is to uh, output um, basically this metadata thingy, right? So let's do write uh, file, so it's going to be mutable file and uh, let me copy paste this entire thing and I think I'm also going to put like a space in here, there we go. So, and we're going to also unwrap this entire stuff. So can I just return from main uh, IO uh, result nothing and just like use the question mark uh, like this? I think I should be able to, right? I think it is a thing that modern Rust allows you to do. Uh, so let's do Rust C main.rs. Seems to be working, seems to be working. Okay, so uh, might as well just print something in here. Um, generated uh, output file path and we can have something like let output file path is going to be equal to this kind of thing so this is the uh, output file path semicolon let's see so because I want to see what it will actually say uh, local variable with a similar name output uh, output 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 file path okay 
So uh, now, uh, when I try to run this entire thing, might as well actually do something like this. Uh, generated output uh, U4M. And if I open this entire thing, there we go. That's a good start. That's already a good start. So we generated part of uh, UV4 MPEG2 format. We generated the magic metadata thingy, which is already good. All right. So we, we're setting ourselves for success. That's basically what we're doing. Uh, so what's, what's going to be the next thing we need to generate? We need to generate width and height. Right, so we already have a width and height in here, so maybe I can do something like width and height. Right, so this is gonna be width, this is gonna be height. So, uh, do we have like a new line at the end of these samples? I think we do. Yeah, yeah, I think we have a new line. So maybe I'm gonna be generating like a metadata with a single right LN thingy in here, right? And let's see what's gonna happen. Okay, so if I open this thing, uh, there we go, we generated width and height. Cool. Next one. Uh, we need to specify the FPS. So what's going to be the FPS we're going to use? So we're in 2021, so we're going to use a modern FPS of 30. Uh, modern FPS of 30. Uh, right. So I don't really want to set a very high FPS, uh, right, because it's probably going to blow up the... Um, the entire size of the file so we're gonna just go with 30 fps for now and then maybe later we're gonna play with the fps a little bit um so uh and fps is a fraction as we know uh right so that means we have to do f um this thing and one over one we're not gonna do fractional stuff right uh because we don't really care about that interlacing so what is this? Is that L or is that I? I would assume it's if, if it's interlacing and all of these parameters, all of these properties are capital ones, I would assume that this is capital I, but you never know with this kind of fonts. So I'm going to just go ahead and copy paste this entire thing and just hope that it, it is a capital I. Yeah, that's why it's very important to use like a right font when you're programming. Right, so we're going to be using a progressive one because I think uh, all of the samples in here do use the progressive one. Yeah, yeah so they do use the progressive one. Uh, right, so that's fine. So, and the uh, ratio of the, of the single pixel, let's actually say we're going to have like a square pixels one by one, right? So there's no reason not to have these kind of pixels. Um, there's no reason not to have these kind of pixels. Um, why did I put it in here? I have no idea. Okay, so let's actually put uh, this kind of stuff in here. Uh, so it's going to be uh, A11. There we go. Uh, so, and the next one is going to be the color space. So let's actually set this color space to C44 because that's precisely what I want to have in here. Okay, so, and can we now generate some stuff in here, right? So we have that, and here is the file. Here's the metadata for this specific file. What if I try to open it within player? Uh, it didn't do anything, right? So what did it say? It recognized the resolution. Wait, it actually recognized the file already. So, uh, raw video, 30 FPS, that's not bad, it recognized the color space and shit like that, so yeah, it recognized the, the video file, you just put a single line in there, right, so, <laughs> this shit is as good as PPM, look at that, it's as simple as PPM, that's actually pretty cool, uh, so what if I, like, say 60? Right, so this is going to be 60, and we're going to have then 20 by uh, 18. Um, is it going to be working? Is it going to be twerking? So let's actually try to run this entire thing. And if I uh, open this entire stuff like that, uh, did it recognize everything? It is recognized, so 60 FPS Full HD. But uh, we're not going to be doing 60 FPS Full HD because it's like going to blow up the whole video file too much. If I want to try to generate like a single second of this video, right? So if you take a look, like uh, a single pixel is gonna be four bytes, right? So this is a four bytes and you have full HD, you have this amount of pixels. So a single frame takes this amount of bytes and I need a single video, a uh, single second of this video. And this is how many bytes I will need for that. So, and if I divide this by one, uh, 1000, this is how many kilobytes I need for that. This is how many uh, megabytes I need for that. And which is not bad, I suppose, like a 50 megabytes. 
well, 50, 500 megabytes, so I guess it's fine. So, yeah, I don't know, but I don't want to deal with that. So, because it probably will take too much time to generate and stuff like that. So, we're going to go with uh, 800 and like 600. Mm, 39. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, all right there, all right there, all right there, all right there, all right there. Mm, so, uh, I kind of want to make a cup of tea. kind of want to make a cup of tea. <sighs> okay, so let's just go ahead and generate a bunch of frames. Right. So, each frame... Let's actually generate like a single frame for now. So, uh, as far as I can tell, uh, the frame starts with the frame. Right, so we do frame, uh, write ln, mute, uh, file... Uh, frame, there we go, and then we need to generate Y. Um, so we're probably going to be generating like a single code because I have no, I have no idea how to convert RGB to like blah you was format. Um, so Y C B of whatever I don't, I don't care. So in uh, height, right? So this is what we're going to have in here, and for X in width, uh, something like this. Right. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So maybe it doesn't really matter. So I could actually do something like this and multiply it uh, width by height. And uh, we just need to generate like three bytes and whatnot, right? So we just need to generate three bytes. So I'm gonna put a uh, pixel and this one is going to be essentially zero. Can I actually suffix my literals with the type? Will that work? Professional Rust developers, please tell me. Will that shit work? Please tell me everything. Uh, also, reference documentation where it says that it does not support that. Please tell me. I want to know that. That's very interesting. Thank you so much. Okay, so, uh, and let's see if it's going to work or not. Uh, all right, all right. So it seems to be working and it generated something. So it generated 1.4 megabytes or something, right? So it means it works. Uh, okay, that's cool. Here is the frame. So, uh, oh my God, Emacs is dying. Uh, okay, so it's going to be M player. And um, well, at least it didn't error out, which is kind of cool, right? So it didn't error out. Uh, I can appreciate that. So let's go ahead and maybe generate um, a bunch of frames. Let's actually generate like frames for a single second. Right. So uh, will that shit work? Will that shit work? Uh, two, 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 two. Let me see. Let me see. And it's taking too much time. <gasps> I know why. I freaking know why. We forgot a very important thing. I hope somebody caught that in the chat. I hope somebody caught that in the chat because we have a lot of professional Rust developers in the chat that know better than me how to develop in Rust uh, in Rust programming language. What did what didn't we do? Why is it slow? Professional Rust developers, why didn't you call, call that in the chat? Well, we need a buffered output. We need a buffered output because this shit is not buffered. I'm pretty sure somebody, some professional Rust developer in the chat actually caught that. I refuse to believe that we didn't have a single professional Rust developer in the chat that didn't ca catch such a rookie mistake as not using buffered output. I just refuse to believe that. If there is no such Rust developer in the chat, our industry is screwed. Uh, there is no hope for our industry. I'm really sorry. So uh, let's go ahead and use buffered output. So. Um, Rust uh, std uh, lib. There we go. Mm, two, 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 two. So what is the buffered thing? I think it's like a buff uh, writer, right? So it's, yeah, it's, it's a buff writer. So it's somewhere in std uh, two, two, two. So it's a buff writer. <laughs> oh, funny joke. Uh, buff writer. Um, underscore underscore release. Well. Oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, so buff buff writer. Uh, so <laughs> oh shit, I'm sorry. Surf what? 
Dial does not to be ashamed of our flex. Especially if they work, you know. Oh. So I think it's just like new. Uh, all right. And that should be it, I think. Yeah, I think that that is basically it. Uh, so let's actually uh, do something like this, right? So, all right. Is it working? Uh, I think it worked a little bit better. We can try to time that. Right. So let's try to time that. So how fast does it work? So there is also time of uh, like... Uh, recompiling everything and then uh, generating things. So this is the two seconds. If I don't do the buffered writing, right? If I don't do the buffered writing, so how much time it will take? So probably it will take more. So I just want to compare the, the things in here. Okay. So we didn't even finish in time, so whatever. Uh, so this is going to be new. And I remember the compiler was complaining about something like uh, unchecked shit. So let's actually go through all of the warnings and see. So uh, actually, let's allow. Uh, Stevie Ryan subscribed with subscribed <laughs> subscribed with Twitch Prime. Thank you so much for subscribing with Twitch Prime. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, and welcome to our Kawaii Club. I'm sorry. So thank you so much for Twitch Prime. I really appreciate that. So uh, hello, that code. Uh, so So we have that, and let's also allow the dead code here as well. Um, okay. To write a line, so we need to do something like this. Right, so if we forgot to do these things. Okay, so everything seems to be fine. Everything seems to be fine. Um, so um, let's go ahead and generate the entire thing. Mm, yeah, takes two seconds. And the size of a file, single file, 42 megabytes already, <laughs> with the resolution in FPS, or with, with this kind of resolution in FPS. So I suppose if everything went well, we will have a single second of a solid color. I have no idea what's going to be the color. Uh, because I have no idea about why CBCR format or whatever the fuck it is, right? So uh, let's do M player and something went wrong. Oh, I wonder what. So it literally didn't work. Um, okay, so. Ah, I think I know. I hope somebody called that in the chat. I hope somebody called that in the chat. This is a very rookie mistake. It's a very rookie mistake. We read the documentation. We read the documentation. And the documentation says that each frame has to start with the frame thingy. Right. I hope somebody called that. I really hope so. Uh, okay. So uh, there we go. So how are we going to be doing this kind of stuff? Uh, all right, so what do we have in here? Starting playback. Uh, no sound and... Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> so, you know what I want to do? I want to make the size of this thing a little bit smaller. So it's a little bit easier to navigate within the... Um, uh, within the thing, right? To navigate within, uh, within the file. So now, uh, if I try to recompile the entire stuff, so let C main RS, right, and... Oh, shit! Did it just fucking work? Well, there was a green color, what the fuck? Did I just generate a video? <laughs> Wait a second. Uh... Yeah, I just generated the video manually. So it's, it's a one second video, so... <laughs> so does it say the duration of the video somewhere? Uh, I don't know. No, it doesn't really say that, but maybe I can do that in the file. 
It's it's a data. Thank you so much. <laughs> very useful, very useful description. Uh, so uh, and yeah, basically what we just did, we generated a video from scratch without using any libraries or anything like that, and this was enabled by a uh, very simple format, apparently. So that was enabled by a very simple format. So we can actually try to like do other different things, I suppose. Uh, let me actually maybe have something like this, 0u8, 0u8. And let's play with different parameters in here. Let's actually set maybe this parameter to like 10. Uh, and let's see what's going to change in here, right? Because I have no idea. Will anything uh, change in here? Uh, to do, 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 generated UV, and uh, if I open the M player, uh, it's still green. I'm super happy about that. It is, in fact, still green. So maybe if I make it like 100, right? So what if it's going to be 100? Is then we're going to have M player, uh, Y for M, and uh, Yesu, 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 Kawaii freaking Desu. Well, that was interesting. Wait a second, one more time. Uh, M player output. Y for M. Can you, can you see? Ah! So. Why CBR is a really interesting color space? It's not like really regular or anything. It's just like. Huh. So I'm not sure if you can see that. All right. So, uh, okay, let's actually try to do something like 100 in here. Uh, and uh, maybe that will change something. Mm, yeah. Cool. Uh, so what if we try to change the, I think it's called Luma, right? Or Luminosity. I have no idea. I think there is a difference between those things. Uh, yep. And it's always green, <laughs> no matter what. No matter what I try, it is always green. It's always some shade of green. Maybe I'm not even able to generate anything but green. Well, sometimes I'm able to generate something else, which is kind of cool, I suppose. So uh, maybe we can try to generate the like UV pattern for, for this entire thing. We can try to do that. We have a function generate UV pattern, but generate UV pattern works specifically for RGB. Uh, but here we we also have um, like a bunch of um, a bunch of like three components, three uh, one byte components. We can do a similar thing. So to be able to do that, I think we need to allocate a buffer of pixels, right? So this is going to be let uh, pixels, and this is going to be mutable, and it's going to be u thirty two u thirty two width. Uh, height and uh, I'm gonna initialize this entire thing with zero so I'm gonna be doing that on the stack which is probably dangerous so maybe we shouldn't do that uh, but yeah so it will be probably better to do that on a heap with a vector or something like that but I couldn't be bothered to actually do it right now so uh, before doing anything I'm gonna be doing generate UV right so we're gonna be doing generate UV pattern uh, right, so this is going to be the pixels, right? So this is going to be mutable thing, right? This is going to be mutable thing. This is going to be width. Uh, there we go. And maybe it would make sense for me to actually extract like this entire thing into a separate uh, like function as well. Something like fn um, write. Um, what is it called? Uh, youth, youth for MPEG 2 frame. Right. So it's going to be pixels. Uh, right. So it's going to be pixels. And actually, we can also specify. Mm, I don't know. I want to specify the color space as well. Right. Somehow. So let's call it C444. Right. So here we're specifying the, uh, what kind of format we're using the frame and the color space of that specific frame. So basically what we expect in here. Right, so, and uh, here we're gonna be accepting a mutable uh, 32, U32, and also the stride, right? So this is gonna be the stride. Uh, 
uh, and this entire thing of course is going to be doing uh, IO result uh, result am I using result correctly Rust developers I have no idea so please tell me if I'm using result correctly I'm not sure uh, I need some help I need some assistance please tell me if I'm using result correctly because maybe I'm not using it correctly Okay, so, uh, and we also need to accept the sync in here, right? So we're accepting the sync, so this is gonna be immutable. Uh, implementation right, uh, there we go. And this is gonna be just a sync, cool. So this is the frame uh, width and height. Well, for that specific thing, uh, for that specific thing, do we even need a stride then? If we're just dumping the frame, if we're just dumping the frame, I think we don't even need the stride in this particular specific case because we can just iterate each individual pixel in the uh, slice of pixels, right? So in the slice of pixels, and we need to extract each individual component in here. So how are we gonna be doing all that? Well, um, I think that's how we can do that. A WXP underscore. Sodium clowning. Sodium clowning. <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, two months of clowning. I really appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to our epic Rust Club. Oh, oh, oh. Have you heard about Rust? Oh, have you heard about Rust? Oh, what do you think about Rust? Oh. Uh, CR, so this is a CR uh, CB, and it's kind of like a similar thing in here. So this is going to be Y uh, CR CB. There we go. So, YCRCB, and then we're just dumping this entire thing. So the idea is that we're generating the um, UV pattern for the frames once, uh, for the pixels once, and then we're just saving it repeatedly, uh, like so, right, like so. Uh, so then we have to provide the file as a mutable thing in here, right, so this has to be provided like this. And uh, the pixels doesn't have to be mutable, but I don't really know why I put it as immutable, right? You know, I committed a very uh, bad sin. I marked something mutable that I have no uh, intention to, to mutate. Uh, so, all right, let me see, let me see. So it does not compile. So this is the pixels mismatched types. Uh, okay, so maybe I have to do something like, something like this. All right, so removing mute, uh, yeah, I, I can actually just put this thing in here. Uh, is it gonna work? Is it gonna work now? Yo, maybe we should also indicate like on which for, oh, that was sexy. My God, kind of even, huh? Mm, so it didn't really look all right, but it was kind of close to be fair to, to what I wanted, which is kind of interesting, I think. Mm. Uh, so, uh, two, 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 two. <sighs> let's actually maybe generate more, um, more stuff. I'm thinking to introduce something like a duration, right? Duration of our nation. So let's say that we want to generate one single second, right? So, and in here, what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to convert an FPS to F32. Uh, right, and maybe um, frame count, frames count, uh, which is essentially going to be U size, but in here, we're going to be converting FPS to F32, multiply it by duration. Uh, and do we want to actually round the amount of frames up or down? Professional Rust developers, what do you think? I need your expert opinion on whether to route up or down. I'm gonna route down actually. So, uh, right, so we're gonna do a down and then I'm gonna convert it to U size. Okay, so and then uh, I'm gonna be basically generating this amount of frames in here. There we go. So, uh, and here I'm just generating a single second, right? So, that doesn't really work well. Uh, calls to constants are limited to constant function, tuple structs, and tu really? Floor is not a constant function? Really? I can't just do that on the floor? Oh my god. Oh, rust people. Rust people. Rust people. Rust people. But it's in nightly. In fact, it's actually a 
Oh, 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 nightly, nightly. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> All right. So I wonder in, in C++, by the way, uh, is floor actually const expression? Mm, 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 mm. So I don't really know. So C++, I think it's an old one. Uh, I think it's an old one. So let's take a look at this one. Maybe there is like an actual technical reason for not making it const. So I'm actually want to double check that. So I think uh, to, 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 to if it's says to D in C++ 11. Yeah, so maybe there is an actual reason to not make it const. Mm, so because of the uh, different hardware and stuff like that. So essentially you would have to emulate different hardware on uh, right when you compile, especially if you cross compile between like architectures and stuff like that. So it's going to be kind of hard. Am I right, professional Rust developers? Please tell me your expert opinion on the topic. Um, okay, so we're going to be doing that in not constant. So we're going to be doing like let. All right. So yep, 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 yep. Okay, generated. So this actually looks cool. I really like how it looks like. So there's something interesting about uh, why CBRCR. So it looks like the, it does not uh, fully correspond to RGB. And I kind of remember that uh, when I was implementing Vodus, uh, when I was implementing Vodus a long time ago. Mm, two, 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 two. So because I had a function that converts RGB to uh, YCBR or something similar in this specific thing. So maybe I can just steal some stuff from there at some point, but yeah. Eh. Mm. It looks like it's not going to be as easy as I thought, but we're going to figure that out anyway. Uh, we're going to figure that out anyway. So I wonder if we have an encoder. So encode UV. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh, yeah, there we go. But it's not really. Yeah. Is it really YCBR? Uh -huh. mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm -hmm. So there's also line size. Yeah, there's a lot of things in here. So, um, but I'm not sure. Like, there's uh, as the conversation said, um, there's a confusion between YUV and uh, YCRCB, right? So uh, maybe this is not YCRCB, if you know what I'm talking about. Maybe it's not. Uh, so, but it's kind of like similar, but in, in terms of the formulas uh, that we actually snapped from here. Uh, where did we snap it? So I think I think I actually left it somewhere here, right? So I think I left it somewhere here, uh, right? So yeah, there here's the formula. So I'm gonna actually copy it in here, uh, right? So is that the same? No, it doesn't really look the same. To be fair. Uh, yeah, it's kind of different. So we'll have to Google up how to convert between these kind of things. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so maybe we're gonna make a small break. What do you guys think? Uh, let's make a small break, I suppose. And after the break, we're gonna figure out how to uh, how to work with this entire thing. So I think it's gonna be fun. Uh, all right. Um, all right. So um, we can try to make something moving without uh, understanding the YCRCB thingy. Uh, specifically, uh, we can basically offset those things depending on the uh, on the coordinates, right? So um, we can offset. We're already kind of offsetting them depending on the coordinates, if you think about that, because we're doing the generate UV pattern. Uh, I have an idea for a different kind of pattern, right? So um, uh, let's put it this way. Uh, I think uh, different uh, kind of pattern, right? So this thing is going to accept uh, mutable pixels, right? So this is going to be mutable pixels, uh, U32, and also it's going to accept the stride U size. U size stride. So uh, it is not going to return anything, but yeah, there we go. So now uh, we're going to be doing uh, width, which is the stride, and then we're going to have height, 
which is the pixels uh, length divided by width. There we go. So in here, I'm going to be iterating over the rows like this, over the rows and then over the columns. There we go. So we have rows and columns. Uh, then we can just do something like Y. Uh, X is going to be, um, well, it's already taken. God damn it. Y is already taken. Y is already taken. Okay, so this is a Luma. Uh, right. I don't remember. D does anyone know what's the difference between Luma and Luminosity? I have no idea to be fair. Uh, okay, CRCB, this one. So we can probably cast it to U8, effectively taking the first like low 8 bits. Uh, we can actually make uh, make sure that we're taking them by just applying this mask or something like that. I think that's going to be fine. Um, yeah, but since we're generating the pixels, maybe it doesn't really matter. Right, right, so it doesn't really matter because I can just do it like that. Okay. So, and Y is going to be yet another of these things, right? Uh, and then uh, CB. The question is, what's going to be CB? Maybe we can accept CB uh, in here. So if I remember correctly, why CRCB? So there is a special meaning for why, right? Why uh, Luma, a CB, a CR is the blue difference and ran difference chroma components, right? So what if we make the differences like a red and blue uh, distances, the coordinates, right? And the Luma is going to evolve over time, you know? It's going to evolve over time and we're going to be passing it as a function in here right so and then i can do something like pixels y multiplied by uh, stride plus x and it's going to be essentially this uh eight two right or cr <clears throat> mm, eight one right or cb uh, Eight zero uh, like this. I'm not sure what's the precedence of the operators in here. So um, I have a habit, habit to actually wrap it in parentheses because of C. So uh, to be fair, I don't really care at, about the uh, the precedence anymore. Um, okay, so formatting doesn't really work properly. Cool. So different kind of pattern, right? So here is the different kind of pattern, and. What's going to be another thing? What's going to be another thing? So what we want to do in here, essentially, is just like call the pixels like this, right? Call the pixels like this with a specific uh, stride and with a specific luma. But the luma is going to be calculated in a different way. All right. So, and uh, let me see. So maybe we're going to actually interpolate Luma from 0 to 255 uh, based on the frames, right? So maybe this one is going to be frame, right? And we're going to take the frame as F32 divided by frames count as F32. And we're going to map it to um, 255 and convert it back to um you said well it has to be u8 you see uh it has to be u8 let me actually make it u8 just in case uh, let me make it u8 and because of that because of that i want to explicitly say that this is i32 i32 okay so uh let me see all right so what do we have in here and uh this one is interpreted as a generic something 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 whatever uh so what do we have in here uh f you're not supposed to put this thing in here right so if i go to semicolon uh what else do we have in here uh expected u32 got you size uh all right so maybe that's basically what we want to do in here so maybe i'm gonna just say as uh u32 right uh luma and this one is gonna be as u8 there we go and all right, so we're generating something over time, I suppose, right? Cool. So let's say the duration is going to be five seconds. How about that? How about five seconds of this shit? Uh, yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
I wonder how much time it will take. It, we need to probably code some sort of like a in uh, like a progress indicator. Um, you know, some sort of a progress indicator would be actually super nice. So this is the video we generated so far, which is kind of cool, I think. Which is kind of cool. Mm, so, all right. Uh, well, all right. So, speaking of evolving the pattern, right? So, somebody asked whether we're gonna evolve the pattern. There we go. We I think we evolved the pattern. So, uh, and let's actually learn how to use this shit. Uh, to to are defined by mathematical coordinate transformation. Uh, prime mathematical coordinate transformation from an associated RGB primaries. I wish I knew what the fuck is the primaries. Is, is that the fancy way of calling the components of RGB? Um, so, because I'm pretty sure if I do RGB primaries, I won't find anything useful. Uh, so, color model is additive color model in which the red. Uh, Blue primary color. Oh, okay. So this is the RGB primaries. All right. So that makes sense. And the white point. Um, so defined by mathematical coordinate transformation from associated RGB primaries and the white point. If the underlying RGB color space is absolute, uh, color space is an absolute color space as well. Conversely, uh, okay, that's a very useful information. Uh, so rational cathode ray tubes are driven by a red okay uh, is sometimes abbreviated ycc is often called ypbr analog component okay is often confused with okay we know that it's always confused with that the main distance that uh, is for analog tv is for digital tv the difference are uh -huh. uh, prior to both signals scale and offset signal are called uh, ypbr created Okay, so scaling and offset to replace the signal in the form uh, YPBR created from corresponding gamma just RGB and using uh, three defined constants. Okay, so I think we know these constants, right? We kind of know them because we got them from here, right? We got them from here. So, and we can get the values, right? Uh, we can get the values where uh, our ordinary driving the equivalent matrix manipulation is often driven. Okay, so we can have a matrix uh, that give you that. Uh, here is the primary symbol meaning gamma correction is being used as RGB. So they don't really talk about the coordinate system. Uh, when represented the signal in digital form, the results are scaled and rounded and offsets are typically added. For example, the scaling. An offset applied to Y component per specification uh, results the value of 16 for black and value of Y is the standard bit. Uh, consequently, the scaling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, all right, all right. So it gives us that stuff uh so maybe we can just try to apply these things and see how they go maybe that will uh, produce something right so maybe that will produce something and then we can try to maybe find the more relevant information that describes how the other stuff is going so there's also some things in here uh that might be helpful Mm -mm. So, sir, for four respect in which a pair of consecutive pixels is represented a pair of consecutive pixels um, hmm, is represented by uh-huh this is very simple this is the data pair of consecutive oh yeah, yeah so this is because they packed yeah, yeah, yeah i see i see that makes sense that makes sense uh, that makes sense. Okay, let's just go ahead and apply this uh, this other formula, right? So let's just go ahead and apply it. <sighs> so where is that? Uh, R, G, and B. R, G, and B. Mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. 
So I'm just thinking what's going to be the function that transforms these things. Right. Maybe the function itself is going to be called something like RGB to um, Y. It's not really YUV, it's uh, YCRCB, right? YCRCB. And here we're going to be accepting uh, RGB components, right? So maybe. So what's going to be the easiest way to accept it? Let's actually accept them separately, right? So this is going to be GU8, BU8, and uh, what this entire thing is going to return, I suppose it's going to return the corresponding uh, YCRCB uh, things, right? So if I'm going to blindly apply that formula, what kind of result we're going to get? So I'm just curious. I'm just curious what's going to happen. Uh, and the cool thing with Emacs is that I can easily do all of that. Right, so this is going to be Y. Uh, 16 plus 65 7 3 8 multiplied by R I suppose we'll have to do as F32 right uh, just in case as F32 so we've got that divide by 256 cool uh, so then 128 0, 057 multiplied by G as F32 divided by 256. So interestingly enough, maybe we can actually put all of that under like the same like uh, parentheses and whatnot. Uh, plus 25, 0, 64 multiplied by B, which is probably, you know, um, F32, right, for, for floating point stuff. And what I'm thinking is that maybe all of that can be actually put uh, under like parentheses and whatnot, because we're basically dividing each individual component here by 256. So effectively, maybe we can just do something like that, right? So I think that's fine, if you ask me. I think that's fine. So similarly, we have with uh, CB, uh, right? So we have these three things and we divide them by 256. Uh, here, not everything is divided by 256, but yeah, I guess I guess that's gonna be fine. Uh, CB 128 uh, minus 37 945 multiplied by R as F32. So I keep converting this thing to F32. Maybe it would make sense for me to just do that uh, up front, right? So maybe we could have something like RF, which is R as F32, and then G, which is G as F32, and then, uh, you know, B as, you know, F32. And then like here, I could just do RF, uh, GF, and uh, BF. Am I right, Rust uh, developers? Am I doing everything correctly? Uh, all right, so RF, uh, so what do we have in here? Uh, divided by 256, uh, minus 74, uh, 494 multiplied by GF, 256, 0. So uh, I'm going to be doing it like that. Uh, so mm -mm -mm, plus 112, 439 multiplied by BF 256 there we go cool so I hope I didn't make any mistake in here right uh, so 74 100 something 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 there we go CR uh, 128 so we're starting to see like different interesting patterns right so this is actually kind of cool like this is very useful to see the patterns and another thing in here is that I can actually sort of like do it like that you can see a lot of um, how to say that mm. job security involved in writing these formulas, right? <laughs> There's a lot of job security involved in here. That's for sure. That's for sure, for sure. And uh, we have to be a little bit careful in here. I think you have to do it like that, right? So because you need to include that minus in here, otherwise it's not gonna really work properly. Uh, right, so yeah, maybe we can even do something like this. Yeah, so we can see shit in this mist, finally. Uh, there we go. Cool. So, and yeah, this basically uh, starts to look like applying some sort of a matrix, right? So where there was some sort of a matrix in here. 
and uh, let me see, let me see. So does it look like the matrix that we were talking about? No, it's not the matrix. So I think the matrix was somewhere. So it, it just depends on this key R, key G, key B, and something, something like that. Maybe it's not. Anyway. So another one is going to be one one two four three nine uh, R F ninety four one hundred fifty uh, G F uh, minus eighteen two eight five uh, B F right. So and then uh, I can simply divide this entire thing by two hundred fifty six right. So dividing it by two hundred fifty six. Right, 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 right. Uh, and I can just do something like this. Okay. So uh, now we've got that. We've got that. So, and now we can probably return Y, C, B, C, R, uh, but also convert all of that to U8 as we go uh, along. Okay. So let me maybe play with this thing a little bit and just see what kind of values this thing produce. Right, so I'm going to put like two in here and then I'm going to create alternative the entry point and um, not printf. Uh, right, so maybe I'm going to put some sort of a color in here, right? So this is going to be like white and white is going to be, let's start with black. Let's actually start with black. So this one is going to be zero, zero, zero. And uh, this is how we're going to be doing all that. So this is going to be black and uh, RGB to Y, C, R, C, B, black. Cool. So let's try to run this entire thing and see uh, what it converts to. So it doesn't even compile. Um, so apply it. Oh yeah, you have to apply. Is there any way to sort of unpack um, these kind of things? Maybe there is no. So maybe uh, the easiest thing to do would be to actually uh, accept this kind of stuff like this, right? So this is going to be the stuff. And can I even destructurize the tuples right in the in the arguments in here? Is that something you can do in Rust, professional Rust developers? Is that something possible? Uh, okay, so it cannot be formatted, so this has to be uh, like a special debug, th debug thingy. Like a special debug thingy. Okay, it is possible. Okay, that's pretty cool. So this is black. Uh, maybe we can now try white. Right? Uh -huh. So white is going to be 255, 255, 255. So what do we have in here? Uh, okay, so that's pretty cool. And this is actually pretty cool because, yeah. So why is Luma or Luminosity or whatever the fuck it is, uh, which is basically offset from like white point. And since we're not changing any specific colors in here, only that Y is changing, you see? All of the offsets from red and blue, whatever the fuck they mean, uh, you know, they're not changing at all, right? So, which is, which is kind of cool. So maybe here I'm gonna also uh, make something like black, right? So, and this is gonna be white, right? Black and white. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, let's introduce something like red and see what's going on in here. Uh, so, can we replace white, red, there we go. And what do we have in here? Okay, uh, so that's kind of sus, right? That is kind of sus because yeah, we put CR at the, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Uh, let me take a look at the formula one more time. Yeah, so it was CBCR. Uh, so this is red and the red offset is like the hugest in here, right? Okay, so let's actually try the rest of the colors. Mm, let's try the rest of the colors. So this one is going to be green and uh, right. And another thing we're going to have in here is uh, blue, right? Another thing we're going to have in here is blue. So let me let me see. Uh, okay, so let's observe what's going on here. Uh, so green. Uh, CRCB. So when the green is actually there's nothing in here. Oh, I remember. I remember the like bunch of like science pop videos. They were talking about perceptions of humans with the red or something like that. 
Uh, so it's not divided by 256. Uh, Oh, R is not divided, okay. Uh, to, 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 so let's put it like this. Uh, okay. Okay, that is really strange. Uh, if it's gonna work, then thank you, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it should work probably. Maybe there is a mistake in the documentation itself because I know nothing about YCRCB, so I have no knowledge to actually evaluate whether it's correct or not. Right, so yeah. Okay, so this thing is doing something, right? It's converting things. Um, we can try to uh, now see if uh, we can use that. Uh, for something, right? For instance, we can try to fill the whole um, the whole thing with a particular color, right? Uh, with a particular color, and unfortunately, I'm a little bit tired already, so I spent a lot of effort like coding all of that. So, and it's already two hours stream. Usually, when I go over two hours, I get extremely sleepy. So, I'm it's already like a lazy stream or something. So. <laughs> Uh, it's already uh, lazy stream. <sighs> All right, so <clears throat> we should make a small break. Another one. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think I need to make another break uh, because yeah, again, it's when every time I go over two hours, it's just like ah, uh, really, really difficult. It's really difficult to stream more than two hours. Okay, let's make a small break. Let's continue. So I'm um, looking into the um, uh, YCBCR, the format, and this is a little bit sus. Uh, following the header is any number of frames coded in YCB in YCBCR plain order. So each frame begins with five bytes, followed by zero or more parameters each precede. This is then followed by row bytes from each plane. So this is rather interesting. What is uh, supposed to be the plane? So let's actually try to Google that plane order. What is that? Uh, so, colorization, code code space, and its application. So, uh, so plain. CBCR uh, plain at constant luma. Uh, uh huh. So, all right, rationale. Uh, I wish there was like a example of this entire thing. Uh, maybe we can find some sort of example in um, in one of the samples, right? So uh, in one of the samples, let's actually go ahead and do that. So here's the frame. Maybe I need to. All right. So maybe before we, we're gonna do that, I want to actually test some other stuff, right? So I'm gonna test some other stuff. Uh, so what I wanted, I wanted to fill the, all of the pixels with uh, some constant color and just see uh, what kind of pattern emerges because we, we saw that there is some sort of like a pattern in there, right? So let's actually go ahead and try to do that. So for pixel in uh, pixels, right? So um, let me try to do that. So maybe it's going to be red and uh, RGB to this kind of thing. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, and I have to provide uh, 256, uh, 0, 0, 0. There we go. So that gives me that. And that will give me also a red uh, y, C, uh, y, red CB, uh, red CR. Right. So the pic pickles. <laughs> pixels. Uh, pixels, right? So in pixels, um, I think I have to do like iter mutable or something. I don't quite remember, but I think that's what I need. I, I will need to do uh, here. 
Um, and then we're gonna do a pixel and um, in the order. So what's gonna be the order? It depends on how we then save those things. We're saving them. Uh, yeah, we're saving them in here. So this is gonna be uh, something like this, right? Uh -huh, uh huh. So that means I'll have to do red Y shift eight by two bytes. Right. Uh, red CB shift eight by uh, one byte like this. Uh, red CR uh, shift eight by zero. There we go. So that's that's the pixel. Let's see. This entire thing is going to uh, produce something. So expect U64. Uh, so we'll need to convert to as U32, as U32, as uh, U32. There we go. So is it going to do anything else? Uh, interpret it. So yeah, probably have to do it like that. Mm -hmm. Probably have to do that like that. Uh, uh huh. Uh -huh. So it is doing something, but uh, probably it's not a correct way of doing that because we're constantly reevaluating these things. So we're not going to do that. Can I just interrupt this and that stuff? Uh, right. So we pre-populated the pixels one once, and uh, let's see what's going to happen. So how many uh, seconds do we generate? Right. So maybe uh, we need to generate a little bit less. Right. So it's going to be maybe one second. Um, uh, so maybe it's gonna be one second and uh, all right so let's see what's gonna happen so if I now try to play the output y for m uh, yep so something went uh, went wrong so it's kind of it is kind of reddish right it is kind of reddish uh, but if we take a look at the top in here, I actually want to take a look. Wow, that's a that's long way from the top. So it's all supposed to be red. And it's kind of repeating at 6. Right. It's repeating at 6. I don't really, actually. Um, <clears throat> I wish there was a little bit better explanation of what we have to put in there because every time I look into YCBCR uh, uh, like a format, the explanation is really really bad. They like there's a lot of like a job security involved in trying to explain these kind of things to other people. Obviously, they don't want other people to understand that, and this is something that we have to sort of uh, you know overcome. Right, so this is something that we have to overcome. Uh, okay, so because, yeah, CBC format in plain order, I'm not sure what the plain order is supposed to mean here. Uh, not really sure. Mm, each frame begins with, maybe I not fully understand what is 444. Uh, maybe that's the problem in here. Maybe I need to do 422. In here, uh, I know for sure that it takes two bytes in here, right? But I'm not sure if it's what I think it is. Um, so I already tried that. Uh, it as this thing. Unfortunately, the one that I want to use is like it's not available. But maybe we can try to use something else. Uh, uh, planar used to be called space where two by two block of pixels in an image is represented by. Two by two block of pixels. Okay, that's already interesting. All right, uh, two by two block of pixels in an image represented by four Y samples, one for each pixels, but all four Y samples share the same. Oh shit! This is interesting. This is rather fucking interesting. Uh, can be transported uh, with several. So we have. Oh shit. Is it kind of the same for 444? Uh, for 444. So, uh, fuck. I wish there was like a better explanation without too much of the job security bullshit. Uh, CBCR, right, CBCR. 
Uh, so, 444. So, let's actually try to find more on this thing. Uh, so, there's NVIDIA GeForce for oh, forums. Forums. Reading forums is like reading chat. So, uh, not really helpful usually. So, and it doesn't really open fast enough. Uh, so, let me see. OneComputerGuy.com. Okay. So, choosing between uh, which output core should you choose? Uh, okay. Uh, an overview. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> this is useless. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, what is. So, it's more of a, like for normies, right? Like parsing. Uh, parsing. YCB. Uh, okay, so we have something like this, right? So, we have some patchwork. Kernel.org. So that's not really useful. Uh, DRM layer. Um, so I really like the explanation of for 20, right? So they talk about a block of pixel and the one that I want is just like not available. It's so annoying. Fuck. Okay, so let's actually try to understand for 20. Maybe by understanding for 20, we can understand what's going on. Uh, right. So presented by four samples, one for each pixel, but all uh, share. Um, can be transported. Uh, uh, uh -huh. So all appears that for trivia, the 12 most likely. This is not useful. It would be kind of cool if there was like uh, an image, right? So this is how they laid out in the memory, right? This is how they laid out in the memory. And nobody's going to show you that, of course. There's like a shit ton of job security involved in this stuff. So people are afraid to lose their job as you know programmers who work on encoding and shit like that of course nobody's gonna tell you that is good uh so uh, mm, it's so annoying so freaking annoying mm, and i don't even know what the samples use right so we have the samples um yeah the samples don't even include the the thing yeah they don't even include this kind of stuff. Mm. YCBCR404 format description. Uh, and Wikipedia is useless. Uh, this one, I'm not sure if it's useful. Uncompress video picture, maybe that's... It's a government website, by the way. I'm not sure we, if we can trust that. Uh, definition. So, what if I put C in there? I don't know. Um, I don't know. <laughs> this is like it's so useless. All of that is so useless. It's just so bad. Understanding. Okay, so let's, let's try to take a look at some of this stuff. Uh, all right. Digital core difference component video picture in which two chroma components are sampled. At half of the rate of <laughs> reducing the horizontal growth. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, so, pixel now. Oh my god, they, they say they're talking about like pixel numbers and shit. Holy fuck, somebody's actually not afraid to lose their job. Oh my god, somebody's not afraid to lose their job and actually tell us how the pixels uh, they are laid out in the memory. Holy fucking shit. What a champ. Okay, let's actually read about that. Uh, okay, so... <laughs> this article explains the basics of... Ah, fuck, it's a UEV or whatever the fuck it is. It's probably... Uh, it's not CRCD. Fuck. But they're kind of similar, so maybe we can we can just use that then. Uh, uh, so, people are still afraid to lose their job. Really. Okay. And, yeah, there's shit ton of con confusion. Uh, the close space. So is the UV UV close space? But people say that it's not the same, and people confuse them. So who who should I trust? Holy shit! This is so bad. Uh, I hope we didn't leak anything. So that's fine. Okay, a sample to the same full rate as Luma impact supports for program. Okay, uh, recorded visually where brightness, uh, UV different signals. Uh, and four represents a sampling rate, uh, which is the standard frequency at digitalizing. The next two digits represent CBC rate, 
uh, rates, 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 rates. <gasps> mm. So four for the four. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, for an n represents a sampling rate, which is uh -huh. the next two digit represents CB. So the well, illustration below the details. Uh, the illustration below, there's no illustration. Okay. Mm -hmm. The other results in the following data structure for each pixel. Okay, so maybe we, we can basically derive something from this. Uh, the data shares UV values between two pixels. Um, okay, where is the 444? Uh, let's actually take a look at 444. Uh, transmits 24 bits per pixel. Each pixel is assigned unique U and V values, one byte of each value, making it most straightforward format to understand. The bytes are ordered in the image in the following manner U, Y, U, V, representing a single byte color or brightness and represents the pixel number associated with these values. I'm not sure if that's the thing I want to do in here because, but no, whatever. The order result is the following data structure for each pixel. Uh, so, Mm, 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 mm. So pixel values, uh, zero pixel is just like three of these things. So it's all about like the order. Uh, it is rather strange. Uh -huh. But we're using specifically 444, so that should be fine. Okay, so what if I, like, this thing suggests to put Y in the middle, right? It suggests to put Y in the middle. What if we just try to put Y in the middle, right? So we can try to do that. So uh, so this one is going to be CB, uh, Y, and CR. Okay, so maybe it's going to get the wrong color, but uh, at least we're going to try it. So I didn't recompile uh, everything. Then recompile everything. Uh, two, 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 two. Okay. I uh, didn't change anything. Okay, that's cool. Um, hmm. Mm, this is painful. Yeah. So it would be such a simple format if you why CBCR wasn't such a cancer. <laughs> Unfortunately, it is a, a freaking cancer. So, uh, what we can do, what we can do... Mm, 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 mm. So, let me try to do the following thing. Y, C, B, C, R, 4, 4, 4, uh, encoder on C or something like that. Um, JPEG, Y, C, B, C, R, row, uh, row. Delphi, Jesus fucking Christ. Am I doing something really esoteric that Delphi fucking comes up? <laughs> um, okay, let's let's read, think about Delphi. I don't care. Like, just any information would be useful <laughs> at this point. Uh, it's not hard to find a formula. Okay. But it's a different formula, actually. Uh, use Skylab property to, to fast access. Okay. Uh, so, I don't know. I don't know, man. Mm, 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 mm. It's really, really, really bad. So, in the Wikipedia, is just like... Wikipedia is useless to read, even. It's just, like, not, not useful. Uh, maybe there's something in the Wikipedia... Oh, calculator? Holy shit. What the fuck? Um... All right. So X, Y, Z, and shit like that. Distance from white point. Enter the triplets below. Okay. Uh. So this is so bad. Mpeg. Uh. 
Uh, and the problem is that I'm too tired already, so... Uh, um, so I'm probably too tired for this kind of thing. What is I... and they all kind of have like a similar abbreviations. Some of them mean the same thing, some of them don't, and it's just like, what the fuck? Uh, designed a range... Uh, okay, cool. Okay, this, there was a shit ton of different formulas in here, and it's just like, okay. Um, so where is the sample? Where is the sample? Um, the most annoying thing about this stuff, by the way, is these samples, is that they don't have the format, the color format attached to them. So it's just so fucking annoying. I don't even know what format they use and what's the default one. Uh, right, so let's actually see what they will say. Uh, so select the color row i420. Um, so it just basically assumes something, right? It simply assumes something and it's like, is that the, the, the format? Like row i420, I suppose that's the, the thing they use, like 420, right? So I suppose this one, yeah. That's the one. Maybe that's the one we want to generate, in fact. Uh, for CC, planner YCBCR core space where two uh, by two blocks of pixels is an image. Um, so if I now take a look at the uh, hexel mode. Oh, shit. It's... Okay, so I don't see... This one is not particularly useful. Mm. Uh, so what's gonna be? I forgot the name of the project. I forgot the name of the project. So two and peg for you. The name of the project. So so we're gonna do hex edit, right? So this is gonna be hex edit and uh, output to y for mp. Okay. So uh, where this frame starts. Okay, so we have repeating things in here, right, A, uh-huh, so these things are just repeating, um, mm -mm -mm -mm. and the size of the of the thing really really annoying uh, I wish there was just explanation of what is uh, you know 444 uh. encoding is systematic well it's it's kind of the same well it's kind of similar uh, human perception into account blah 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 uh -huh. two from RGB. Uh, typically converted to the next blah blah blah. Um, nope, this is not what I want. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take a look at this thing. Maybe there's stuff. Uh, so. This side gives a pretty good overview on different UV formats. Uh, let's take a look. UV pixel format. Back to you. Holy fucking shit! Oh my god! Somebody gave me like a table or something. What the fuck? Somebody's actually giving me information. Uh, okay, plan. Planner, you. Oh my god, for fuck's sake! Holy shit! Uh, okay, so maybe we can work with that. Uh, finally, something useful. Okay, for equivocation, these numbers are for the demand of color component subsampling. Holy f this is like a, yeah, finally useful information. Chroma subsampling is the practice of encoding images by implementing less resolution for chroma information than for lume information uh, of human visual. Okay, uh, holy fucking, finally! Each of the three components has the same sampler, thus there is no chroma sampling. The scheme is sometimes used in high-end film scanners. No, that, uh, but what that means, like how is it laid out in the memory? It doesn't tell me. Okay. Uh, all right. 
So, I'm not sure is it this one. Uh, UV planner, UV formats. Uh, it's not useful. Okay. Uh, these numbers are for the dimension of color components. So for instance, 444 so means that every of the three components. What is the sample rate? Like, what is the sample rate? <laughs> it's not helpful. Uh, Subsampling, meaning that every three components has the same sample rate, whereas four states for uh, only sampled with half. I don't understand what is a sample rate and what do they mean by sample. Like, sample is such an always confusing word for me because it means absolutely different things in, depending on the context. And it's just like people throw this word around. What do you mean by sampling? It's just like, uh, so annoying. Uh, core component for sampling. So, where is that noting? Blah, blah, blah. It's a pretty old question. How is just to finish some uh, recording UV? That UV bits are grouped together. Planner means that you buffers are separated in three in three different memory areas. Wait, what? Uh, it's pretty old question. How I just finished work about decoding UV and I work like to share some infos. There are three main aspects of the UV schema. If the source buffer is packed or planner, packed means that UV bits are grouped together. Planner means that UV buffers are separated in three. Wait a fucking second. Do I have to put them freaking? Don't tell me that I have to pack them like this. Don't freaking tell me that uh, there's that to it. Is it, holy fuck, really? Is that what they want? Those freaking security jobbers, like, I swear to God, like, what the fuck is wrong with people? Why nobody is, I'm, if I'm gonna fucking try that, and if it's gonna just fucking work, I'm gonna be so fucking mad. Holy freaking shit, like, what is wrong with people? Oh, so dumb. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is the dumbest shit I've ever seen in my entire life. Holy fuck. Sample ratio means that you horizontally have two value of each, um, Okay, so that means... Oh, this is so dumb. Holy fuck. Uh, so we have something like this. And, okay, so for each of these things, a planner order, but how I... Is it going to be as dumb as that? That's the question. Two separate buffers are three different memory areas. Sequential or not? Um, okay, Ye a plain order. Okay, mm. let me think. So that means we want to do that three times at least, right? So um, for each individual frame, um, so write UV. Ah, uh -huh, I see. Cool. Um, so I'm gonna go and just remove this shit and instead of that stuff I'm going to uh, do something like this um, mm -mm -mm -mm. so this is gonna be red this is gonna be that and for each frame uh, right so what do we do in here uh, for this in width by height, right, for width by height, and uh, what I do is just basically sync uh, right, uh, and I'm gonna just be doing right the y, uh, like this. So I'm gonna be like writing it by one by one, uh, just to see if it's gonna work or not. So duration is one second, so that's gonna be fine. CB, uh, and this one is gonna be CR. Uh, C, B, C, R. So that kind of explains the pattern as well, if you think about it. That kind of explains the pattern as well. Anyway, so uh, let's try to recompile the entire thing. And let me see. So it does not compile because I have to take it back mutable. Am I right, fellow Rust developers? Uh, no, I'm not right because it's called file. Maybe I should have called sync everywhere here. So because I use uh, this thing sync in some places and in some places I call it file. So I think it would be better to call it sync everywhere. Uh, all right, so this is going to be the sync. Um, right. 
uh, zero, zero, zero. Okay. Okay, so it's outputting something, right? So we're using buffer, right? So it shouldn't be the problem. So writing byte by byte shouldn't be a problem. Uh, okay, so if I take a look at some of this stuff, uh, I, that was a mistake. I should have not opened it. I should have not opened it in Emacs. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, oh shit! This is the best definition of the chat I've ever seen. Chat is either smart assing or trolling. Exactly. That's I never read it. Like, even if there is something that kind of resembles. Uh, the relevant information, I learned the hard way that no, it's either smart assing or trolling and it's never helpful. I'm really sorry, but it's just like I had to learn it a really hard way uh, to ignore the chat. So I'm really sorry. It is what it is and it isn't what it isn't. Uh, to, 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 because a lot of people don't even try to understand the technicalities and all of the nuances of what I'm doing. So they kind of often like do like give uh, the answers that are not like well informed and they're making a lot of assumptions and this is not what I'm doing in fact so um, so I had to learn how to ignore people unfortunately it is what it is I wish people were more helpful but they're not I hate it I really freaking hate it why the fuck nobody could explain a planner as like this person this person is an actual hero is an actual hero. He like they, they came basically to the thread and said, like, listen, listen, here's how it's done. Here is the actually useful info right there. Just ignore all of that smart ass bullshit that is on the internet. This is how it is now. This is the real hero right here. We need more people like this in the world. Seriously, who's just saying like, yeah, fuck all of these smart asses that are afraid of their job and their job security and trying to obscure all of the explanations and shit like that. Here's what you need. We need more people like this. Seriously, who just like, yeah, that's the useful, useful info bro. And you can use that. So obviously the, the core is actually kind of incorrect. But it's probably because I'm like doing that in not correct order, right? So so it's B C B C R or something. So if I like swap these things around, I'm pretty sure like maybe something's gonna change. Uh, right. So let me let me try to do something. Let's see. There we go. So it's probably something like this. Uh, two 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 two. Yeah. Uh, to, to, now it's right. So basically, we we just had to do that in a different order. Um, so and I wonder if we if we just tried like something like green, right? So if we try something like green, so it's going to be that, then main, uh, right? And this is going to be uh, M player, M player, and uh, it's just going to be something like that. There we go. So is it is it waiting? Is it doing something? Okay, so this is green, which is correct, and uh, blue should be also correct. So now we have this kind of shit. Um, hopefully. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Cool, we figured it out. I hate it. <laughs> so, so this is already not a very useful format because. Uh, <clears throat> because the idea of a simple video format would be that I can just start using that format without remembering too much, right? So, and this kind of shit makes the format useless, <laughs> right? So, um, yep. <laughs> Uh, I, 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 my objective was to find some sort of a video format as simple as PPM that you can just code uh, and don't remember too much. Unfortunately here, because of the, you know, screwed up the like a color space or something like that, I have to do this kind of shit, which is kind of lame, but maybe I can teach myself to actually think in terms of YCBCR. You know, 
So it's all about like what kind of color space you're thinking in, right? So maybe for the videos, well, I mean, so a lot of a lot of uh, operations on the cores are like easier to do in RGB. Actually, it's easier to do in HSL, but it's like it's a different a different story. So yeah, you need some some sort of a conversion between these two, and it's just like very very fucking annoying. Mm. Mm -mm. It's a very very fucking annoying. Yeah. So that's kind of that's kind of sad. So th this uh, this format had a huge potential for me, right? It had an absolutely huge potential, but unfortunately, it's just like nope. It's not particularly useful for me. Unfortunately, it's kind of sad. Not gonna lie. It's kind of sad. It would be kind of cool to also try to do an animation. Uh, but again, um, I already streamed for like th almost three hours, right? And uh, my brain is already kind of, you know, turned off. And I don't know, I'm kind of disappointed in this format. It would be a perfect format if we could just swap out YCBCR to RGB. But we can't just do that. <laughs> Right. We can't just do that. Um, we can't just do that because uh, the idea of the simple format is the like relying on existing infrastructure, right? So we need a simple format, which is super easy to dump things into. And uh, then you can play it with existing infrastructure. You can play that thing with a, with a browser or with a, you know, video player or something like that. Uh, if we try to invent our own format, it's not the thing that we can do because the current infrastructure just simply does not support this kind of stuff, right? So uh, if you're trying to suggest me to like just make a new format, well, you're missing the point of what I'm doing right now. I'm completely like, uh, completely missing the point of what I'm trying to do. So it's not about a new format, it's about an existing simple format for which the infrastructure exists, right? And that was one of them, uh, and I don't think it's actually, you know, feasible for what I'm trying to, to, to use it for. It's not as convenient as PPM, for instance. Uh, it's not as convenient as PPM. It is what it is, and it isn't what it isn't. So. God, I, I wish I, uh, I had more energy and time to play with this thing because I really want to do something like more, right? I really want to do something more. I could split this entire thing into two episodes, but the problem is nobody's going to watch second episode. So uh, yeah, there will be no second episode of this uh, video format. So every time I do the second episode of interesting series, nobody's fucking watching that. Like it's like two thirds of people are just gone. So because ah oh, we already saw that, so what's the point of watching? So and because of that, I have to do like a single episode right away, and I have to like manage to finish everything I wanted within the second a second episode. Otherwise, people are just not not gonna watch the second one. So it is what it is, and it isn't what it isn't. Anyway. So I hope today's stream was interesting and maybe it was educational, I don't know. Thanks everyone who's watching right now, I really appreciate it. Uh, have a good one and I see you next time. I don't know when, I don't know where. Um, God, I'm s this is such a blue ball format, it just pieces me off. It's like, it's, it was like one step away from being actually useful. <laughs> It was just like one step and it would be actually useful format for debugging purposes. It's just like so, it makes me so fucking mad. Like just, if you could get rid of this bullshit, it would be useful. It's just like with this bullshit, nah, nah, I just like, yeah, I had to carry this function around with me all the time, which defeats the purpose of such a simple format. It just completely defeats it. Because for PPM, I didn't have to carry anything around. I just like, I can code it without remembering anything. It's just... God damn! Anyway, so thanks everyone for watching. Uh, I see you all next time. Love you. Mwah.